Hi, you guys. Um, I thought that I would do a little landscape video. Uh, we had a very intimate class last week. Uh, it was a beautiful day here in the Northwest, so I think people played hooky. And as I told the class, if I wasn't teaching, I would have played hooky too. So, uh, but since so many were gone and it's a tough subject, I thought I would go ahead and do, uh, hopefully it will just take a couple of videos, we'll see, on doing a landscape. And um, I'm gonna warn you in advance that I haven't had a ton of success doing landscapes yet. Um, haven't been super happy with my results, but I can show you what I do to set them up. And, um, and then it just takes practice. So I'm drawing, a little um, block. This will be the space for my landscape. This will be a little space to test color. Uh, this is a, a sketchbook that I made myself um, because I, I took a class. I'll try to remember to link in the notes, but um, I really wanted a small, I like a small sketchbook because then I take it with me more often, but I also wanted a sketchbook that had a really nice watercolor paper. So this is 140 pound paper that I ripped into these sheets so that I could put them into a book. So my, um, my paint may react a little differently than if you have uh, more mixed media paper or student grade watercolor paper or watercolor paper that's not cotton, um, cotton rag. This is cotton rag paper. I have to be honest, I don't actually know what that means, but I know what it means in terms of how the paint reacts. So that's why I wanted this paper because you just have a little more flexibility to move paint around and lift paint and that kind of stuff. Um, and I also recommend with landscapes, you know, I, I like to do them small because the more, we, the more paper you cover, the harder it is to make the shapes interesting. And frankly, it's, it goes a lot faster to paint a small landscape. So for practice, I think doing them small is just a really good exercise. And I'm kind of playing with the idea of like a, you know, what, what does a 30 minute paint session look like? Um, and I'm kind of playing with that idea. And one way to do that is to keep the, the painting small. So what I'm gonna do is spritz my colors here. Um, I'm about to swap out this palette for a bigger one, but I haven't done it yet because I can't quite figure out how I wanna organize things. And then I'm using a photo from one of my students, um, Kathleen, and she shared a bunch of photographs with me from, she had double sets from trips and shared them with me for photo references because it is nice to just hold a photo. Um, I will, include a link to um, how to use your phone for your photo so that it won't keep shutting off. Uh, so I'll get that on the website too. Uh, but for now, I actually have this nice photo right here that we can both use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the photo, of course, and I'm gonna see, um, first of all, that the way the photograph was taken, it's not consistent with the rule of thirds um, and the best compositional elements. So let me get a little piece of scratch paper here so we can talk about this. Um, so with the rule of thirds, These are important, uh, you can't really see this in this video. Let's make it darker. This is just kind of the classic rule of composition that the eye is more interested in an odd number of objects. So if you're painting flowers, do one or three or five, not four. Um, and where things are placed on the page is also really important. In the West, we read left to right. And so um, this is actually, you'll notice in masterpieces that often the focal point will be there, like the bird's eye or the shiniest bunch of grapes, or whatever. Any of these points are interesting focal points and often we can put things in more than one place. But um, that's kind of a classic focal point. But for a landscape, it's really these three divisions here that we're interested in. 
So, um, you know, frankly, once you know that, you can actually take better photographs. Uh, but that's why professional photographs are so good because they already know these rules and they're doing their art with those rules in mind. So this is more like they did it at half. So half of this picture is the sky and half is the, I believe it's Rainier. Mountains look different from different perspectives, but I think that's Rainier. Um, uh, so, you know, the mountain and all of the juicy stuff here is only half of the picture and then the sky is up above. So if I had been taking the picture, I would have put the mountain up here, the top of the mountain up there. Um, so I'm going to do that in my sketch. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball, you know, thinking about where things will be. And so the first thing I'm going to do is holding my pencil super loosely. You're not, you're probably not going to see these lines, but that's okay. We'll get the point. And then there's this little rocky thing right there and it kind of juts like that. So I don't even have to do that exactly when I paint. In fact, I kind of want to even this out a little bit. I did it kind of blind, meaning I wasn't really looking at it. And so I didn't get the marks that I wanted. And then I can have this be, you know, more of the rocky stuff down here. And for this, I actually want it to be really jagged. I'm not going to try to draw those jags exactly. Oh, and actually this is right here. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so that butts out right there. So then I'm gonna come in here and then, oops, wrong pencil, wrong pen. We'll have that, mm, let's see here. Now we gotta, now my lines, we gotta move things around. Now this is the importance of setup, you can tell right here, because if I don't know where my lines are, I don't actually know where I'm going. Um, and so let's do this one a little more shallow so it can hit there. Okay. And then I'm going to put some trees, you know, down here, including, I really like this tree because it's kind of going up into the sky. Now I think this part, I'm going to go a little higher. Now with watercolor paper, I say these things all the time, but when you erase, you're actually kind of destroying the paper a little bit. So you want to be a little careful with how much you're erasing. Um, but again, I have really good paper, so I, I've got some, some space to work with. And that's gonna be all the pencil setup that I'm gonna do. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is maybe give my colors a little bit more of a spritz. And I'm actually gonna take a color that is not in this palette yet, if I can find it. Okay, I can't find it. Um, I'm looking for Thalo Blue Red Shade, um, but I'm not finding it and I obviously wasn't prepared. So we'll just go for it. So I think the first thing I wanna do is the sky and I'm gonna make it more of a blue sky. And I'm just mixing up a little bit of paint here. I've got some green stuff going on here. That's okay. That looks pretty good. It's a little dark for a sky. Um, and I might need a little bit more to make sure I cover it, but, but I am gonna make it a blue sky. Uh, that's pretty dark. It's gonna dry lighter. Watercolor dries lighter, but I still want it to be a little lighter than that. So to paint my sky, I'm gonna turn my book over because I want to, and I'm gonna tilt it because I wanna work with gravity here. And I know that I'm going against this line. Now, I might even set the photograph up here so I can see the line of the mountain again because I don't have to track this um, pencil line exactly. And in fact, I think I wanna start lower down. Let's see, I got quiet. Now I don't have to worry too much about going over those because those are gonna be darker and so I'll cover them later. Now I have a little bead that's collecting, but now I've gotta work fast. And then how do I wanna approach these edges? Do I wanna totally fill them? Do I wanna kinda of leave them loose? I guess I better fill them because I filled them on the edges, the, the sides. So I'll just go ahead and fill them like that. Okay, now we have a sky. Now it is the Northwest, so I might wanna see a little bit of cloud. So I'm gonna drop a little more water in. 
And then squeeze my brush out and I can actually pick up all that water. And now this is where a sable brush works a little better as a sponge, but if I squeeze it out pretty good, then I can get that out of there. Now I'm just using the brush to lift, lift some clouds. Um, I'm gonna get a sable brush just because it will work a little better because I do want to kind of accentuate this cloud. So now I'm just, now this is where a cotton rag paper will work a lot better because I can just kind of use this water to sort of lift some of that cloud. Now I can also take a paper towel and kind of lift it this way. And then if I do that, you know, that's not really how a cloud looks, right? So what I want to do is come in here and mix a little gray. And I should move fast because it's not gonna stay like that forever, meaning it's gonna dry. That's looking a little too green. It would have been better if I'd mixed this cloud color first. So you go ahead and do that. Cause see now it's drying. So you can, there, there, that, that worked better. Here it's still wet. And so I'm gonna get that nice kind of look of um, the edge of a cloud, the bottom of a cloud. But over here, I can just, you know, soften it a little bit. Wipe out my sable brush and kind of soften it. Now I will say, I don't think the cloud <laughs> goes at an angle like that. So I should probably fix that because really I think the bottom of the clouds will go straight across, right? That doesn't quite look right. So let's drop that in again. All right, and then let's see how that looks. Um, okay, so the color isn't so great. It's a little too green, but I think we get the point. And you know, that color is really important in a landscape because if it is not the right color, it's not gonna look natural. Um, I'm gonna lift some of this out here. But really, if you look up in the sky, up at clouds, you will notice that the bottom of them is gray. So I shouldn't have lighter underneath there. Um, so what I can do about that is, maybe I'll take some of what looked a little too green and then mix it over here with my red because that will calm it down a little bit. That looks a little too red. Because if I wanna calm down a color, I just mix it with the complement on the color wheel. So if this gray is looking too green, then a little red will make it more gray. Now that stuff just takes practice. So um, stick with me, kid. Okay, so now I don't wanna do, um, I don't wanna do anything against the sky because I'm going to lose the line of my mountain and you'll see from photographs and from your own observations. Hang on a second, this cloud. This is what happens with watercolor. This is kind of, I, I, I just kind of like this about it. And for my personality, which is like a total stickler, it's, it's good for me. It's good practice to be like, whoa, 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 where are you going there? Hang on there, sister. Let's, let's get this back together. Um, you know, I'm not in control of this paint. And sometimes, but to me, all that means is I just have to know how to fix it. I just have to know how to move things around. As long as I know how to move things around, then it's totally fine that I'm not in control of it. I'll just, you know, let's just move that cloud back a little bit. And I think people get frustrated because it's not doing what they want it to do and they don't know how to fix it. But um, once you know, once you're using proper paper and proper brushes and you know how to um, work with it, then it's just fun. And actually I'm getting a lot, I feel like it looks a lot more like clouds the more I've kind of worked with it. And in fact, that kind of, so I just squeezed out my brush a little bit cause I don't want the water in there, but I do just want to drop in, mm, that color's looking funky. I don't know, too orange or something? I can't quite tell. But you know, now that I've cleaned it out a little bit, but now it's wet. So this is called charging. I can actually charge in more color um, because it's still wet and it'll just be nice and loose and soft. And so I think that actually is looking more like clouds than uh, when I first did it. But it was because I had to work with the paint and keep moving it around. That looks, that's looking very natural to me. 
Um, you know, the other, one other thing we could do, well, I don't think I'm gonna do it, but it technically is um, darker at the horizon line. Well, the horizon line's kind of down here, but it, it should, atmospherically, it's darker here than it is as you go up in a blue sky. It will diffuse a little bit, but it's kind of dry. Um, you know, maybe if I wasn't dealing with the clouds, I could have kind of swiped it up at the top so it would look like it was um, a lighter blue. But I forgot, and I was working on clouds, and that's that's okay. But, you know, it may be good to know that if I was going to take this sketch and do a bigger painting, that's certainly a detail I would want to capture. So I'm not going to paint the mountain because it's going to bleed into the sky. And uh, as I was saying, you do see a hard edge of the mountains against the sky. So I want to leave that hard edge there. Um, some of this is obviously going to be white because the mountain has snow on it, as Rainier always does. Well, <laughs> boy, Oof, I hope it always does. Um, and then I also don't want to do the darks because um, these rocks are also hard lines against the sky. And then this is going to go into the sky. And so I need this paint dry or else it's going to have the soft effect. You know, that's that's the thing you need to know. When do I want to work with the wet paper? When do I want to work with dry paper? Because if this is wet, um, it's going to bloom and soften, which is lovely for doing clouds, but not for doing this dark, hard line of a tree in the foreground, which the eye is seeing much more, uh, much darker because it's obviously closer to the viewer. Um, so that's all I can do right now. So that was, let's see, 16, 17 minutes. And so this is kind of what I'm talking about, about, you know, just like a short little painting session. Now I've, uh, which is actually starting, I think is the hardest part, but I chose my photo. I, um, I sketched out my, my drawing. I did my sky and my clouds. And now I can just let it dry and, and come back later to do, you know, the next thing would be to do um, some of this darker stuff in the mountain and in the foreground, the rocky foreground. And then after that dry, the last thing I would do is the trees in the front. So we have, and then maybe, you know, tinker with some things to add some more definitions and value and just a little more interest. Um, but that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So um, I hope that was helpful. Why don't you go ahead and um, maybe take a photo of this picture and uh, and use that to set up your set up your landscape and then we'll take it to step two. Thanks. Have fun.